Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this evening's edition of the Ummah tonight where we are addressing pressing issues facing the Muslim Ummah today. And this, this issue we couldn't find, uh, this evening rather, we couldn't find a more pressing issue than the situation of Muslims in Sri Lanka. Similar to the situation to Muslims in Myanmar or Burma, uh, the Muslims are facing in Sri Lanka ongoing and continuous uh, systematic oppression and violence uh, waged against them by various groups including but not limited to the Bodu Balasina extremist Buddhist group who has been attacking uh, uh, Muslim-owned stores and residences. Uh, so this is, of course, is a very, uh, a very important issue to address. Uh, this evening, of course, I'm joined by my co-host, Akram Fauzi, and we're also joined by a very prestigious guest, perhaps one of the most well-known American Muslim scholars uh, in the day, uh, th these days. He is the Dean of the College of Islamic Studies at the well-known Mishka University, in addition to old holding a PhD in comparative fiqh, as well as being a ped pediatrician by trade. He has hosted many programs of, on Huda TV, as well as hosted most recently uh, the instructor, rather, for the fiqh course at Huda Online Academy. I'm ta of course, I'm talking about Dr. Hatim al hajj Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Hatim. Wa alaikum as salam Thank you. Well, Jazakum, Doctor. Thank you, for, your, for, your, for spending your time with us this evening. And Brother Ahmed, thank you for joining us as well thank and you. joining me and, and co-hosting the program with me. My first question, uh, Dr. Hatim, uh, was the, the same question I asked uh, last week when we discussed Burma. Does it seem to you as a native Arabic speaker that the Muslim world outside of the Arabic speaking Middle East has been forgotten and they're, 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 they're not treated with the same respect? It's as if they're not important. Do you agree with that statement, Dr. Hatham? <coughs> well, it depends on, uh, it depends on uh, whom you're talking about. If you're talking about Arab nationalists, then certainly the Muslims outside of the Arab world would not matter that much. Uh, but if you're talking about the uh, Muslims uh, in the Arabic wor world, particularly practicing Muslims, particularly uh, practicing Muslims with Islamic ide ideology and orientation, uh, then I, I would uh, dis uh, disagree to some extent, and agree to some extent. The, uh, the, you know, the language is a huge barrier between people. If you if you go to the masajid in in uh, in America, for instance. Uh, we always tell the people to, to put a little bit of extra effort to associate with people who don't speak their native language. It does require a little bit of extra effort. So when you find the Pakistanis and Moroccans and Egyptians and, you know, uh, West Africans sitting in different circles in the masjid, uh, it, it is not because of racism. It is not because of superiority, but it is just because of comfort. Yeah. So language is a barrier, and we need to break uh, through those b barriers, all of the barriers, uh, because we are one ummah. This nation of yours is one nation, and I am your Lord, so worship me alone. So you need to put a little bit of extra effort to, to really be uh, uh, cognizant of the, the Muslim suffering outside of your uh, neighborhood, outside of your region. Uh, so, so to some extent, yes, but it is not because of superiority, it's not because of negligence, it is rather because of laziness or um, not putting enough effort to okay. uh, into uh, this issue. Well, very w well put, to Dr. Hattam. I couldn't agree more. Sometimes the, ling the linguistic barrier, it's not uh, intentional. It's just a reality and it, and it happens between people. I would say, uh, perhaps Brother Ackman also can give me your thoughts uh, uh, after Dr. Hattam. Uh, we see that the coverage of Syria has the Arab news has been covering it, you know, till extreme, you know, till we're blue in the face, Syria, 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 and they deserve that and more than that. But if we can compare the news of Syria, the coverage of Syria to the, the coverage of Burma and Sri Lanka, it, it's nothing in comparison, is it? Uh, <clears throat> well, well, Syria is the last member of the Arab Spring states that has not succeeded yet in sort of realizing their goals, their objectives. So it is, it is it, the issue is is not just about Syria. It's about the whole Arab world, and uh, Syria is uh, has a quite a central uh, place in the Arab world. <coughs> it, it has to do with the uh, Arab uh, or Ar Israeli conflict. It has to do with uh, the new world order. It is not just limited to Syria. Uh, whereas what is happening in in other places outside of Syria. Uh, sh sh should, should not be neglected, it should not be belittled, mm -hmm. uh, but it may not be, it's, it's not just in the Muslim world. CNN does not cover Burma or yeah. Myanmar Good as point. much as it covers Syria. Yeah. Uh, so so there, there are 
there is a larger context for what's happening in Syria. Yeah, of course, Doctor. That draws a lot of attention. Yeah, the implications of what could happen in Syria, we might say, are larger for the interested parties, Israel and the United States, than the implications of what will happen in Sri Lanka. So that, that, I think that's what you meant. I think that's very well put. Uh, thank, thank you, Doctor. Brother Ahmed, uh, we do have a piece of news, Brother Ahmed, inshallah, that we're going to show. I think you, you saw this as well. Yeah, uh, sure. Sri Lanka police uh, standing by as a, a Muslim owned. Uh, store, clothing store titled uh, named the Fashion Bug, and you can see that on your screen now. Uh, that was located in the Pelopiliana province or, or district, rather, of the capital Colombo. Um, yep. And uh, it was reported uh, by the Tamil Weekly that hundreds of Buddhist monks in Colombo uh, led this assault on the Muslim owned clothing store while the police stood by. Uh, co in complacency. Yeah, as you see in the news, and, and also there is a video in, in, uh, in the same news, you will find that uh, an angry mob of hundreds of people led by Buddhist monks attack uh, a warehouse uh, belonging to a Muslim-owned uh, clothing chains and so on. You will find many people, they started to establish a new uh, Burma, a new uh, uh, racism uh, and a new uh, civil war in this area. Sri so Lanka, as it's known, the pearl, pearl of the Indian Ocean. It's going, and, and also, you know, a paradise in, in the Maldives area. You find that it's going, and it's turning to uh, a hellfire of racism civil fight. Now, so by what? By just attacking three groups of Muslims there, and I insist to say three groups of Muslims because they still being three groups, they are not united. And this is uh, a big issue we have to concentrate on, uh, to concentrate on this. Unite, to, to be united is something you have to do as a Muslims. And uh, as what are the three groups that they are divided into, Brother Akhwit? Uh, so uh, according to uh, uh, here, I have uh, read about it, uh, we, uh, inshallah, uh, there is, uh, in Sri Lanka, I, I see it just... Uh, yeah, I think you have Indian Muslims, Muslims originally from Indian Muslims, India itself, okay, right? and Moors, okay. and uh, Malays. Okay. Which is basically from Malays, yes. I think. Yes, yeah. okay. as I see here. So yeah. you're saying they are divided along their own ethnic lines, so they should unite in one community and support each yeah. other. That's the point. Yeah, I see. Exactly. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, brother. As Dr. Hatem said, uh, the, the idea, and he quoted the, the idea. And laziness. I, I, I just like the, the word he said, there's laziness in, in those people. When you, t for, for example, Dr. Hatem is in uh, America now, and I have witnessed this when I went to Seattle area doctor, and I found just some people from Iraq and some people from Arab countries, and they still ask for translators and interpreters. And when I asked it about how long did you stay here in this country, they said about 10 years. And you still thinking, of having a translator, why yeah, don't yeah. you just mix in this community? Because Muslims, they have to be, you know, like mixed in the community and involved in these communities because they have to be uh, a valuable part of these communities. Subhanallah, uh, putting the gap is uh, uh, the uh, Muslims have a big role in this of putting this gap, and this is my opinion. I don't know. Uh, about your opinion on this, uh, Doctor, I don't know. No, I agree. There is a lot of laziness, and, and this laziness is not only limited to crossing the borders of your comfort zones, uh, but it is, it is just laziness in, in everything that we do. We, we have become uh, lazy. We suffer from lethargy and lassitude. Uh, this has to do with our religious commitment, our practice. You know, this has to do with our night prayers, with our, you know, commitment to you know, Islamic ethics, Islamic morals within our corporations, within our institutions, uh, in our individual practice, in our, you know, breaking of promises. Uh, th there is uh, some weakness in our religious commitment uh, that reflects on uh, all spheres of our, you know, interaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, mm -hmm. the creation, uh, particularly with our interaction within our ummah. Uh, with the different uh, parts that constitute this own. Doctor, uh, you are based in the United States, and we do see in the United States a lot of talk about Islamic extremism. But do we see any talk? Are you surprised there's no talk of Buddhist extremism? And people would laugh if I said that, because we have this image of Buddhists in America as being very peaceful and loving people. 
and perhaps many of them are, but the idea of the religion itself, it's not under attack because they say, oh, this is a peaceful religion, quote unquote. Whereas we see now in Burma, Buddhist monks at the head uh, of this violence, uh, killing Islamic scholars even. And we see in Sri Lanka now, Buddhist monks leading the assault against uh, innocent Muslim bystanders. Uh, I didn't hear anything from the Dalai Lama, not one single word, not one word of condemnation from the Dalai Lama who's put up here as a peaceful figure, as well as a Nobel Peace Prize winner from Myanmar. I believe she gave one sentence after being, after being pressed to do so, that was, which was very, uh, you know, not acceptable. So, Doctor, have you heard any, any talk in the United States about Buddhist extremism as opposed to Islamic extremism? No, I have not, and, and, and it is not surprising that you did not, because the, the, the talk in the United States about Islamic extremism uh, is, is not because of, uh, it, it is not because of uh, any particular event that happened within the last 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 years. Uh, you, you have to understand that there is, that there, there are issues, there are conflicts between uh, the the West or sort of like uh, Europe and uh, all of the shoot-offs from Europe and the Muslim world for the last several hundred years, crusades, uh, uh, imperialism, colonization, and the current tension. I do not blame the West only. Muslims do uh, share part of the blame uh, because they they sort of allow themselves to become colonized. Yes, it is sort of the the, the susceptibility to colonization that we had before this colonization t took place. So we can't blame our failures on, on others all the time. We're responsible for our susceptibility to being oppressed, our susceptibility to being um, overtaken by other nations uh, in the, for the past several hundred years. The demographic bomb, so, sort of, you know, quote unquote, demographic bomb in Europe makes uh, Europeans very uh, aggravated, very agitated, uh, concerning Muslims, towards Muslims. Uh, they're talking about Muslims becoming the majority in Europe in the, in the foreseen future. They're talking about uh, particular European countries where Muslims may become the majority um, uh, you know, in the middle of this uh, century. So uh, this creates a lot of uh, an anxiety and this anxiety creates this xenophobia, mm -hmm. fear from the uh, other and, and subsequently uh, trying to uh, sort of uh, distort the, the image, at least to impede, <coughs> to impede the, the speed of conversion of people to Islam within their own countries, within Europe and within the United States. We've seen that can, there is uh, a trend of people converting to Islam in Europe and Michelle. in North America. So to impede this and to also impede the immigration and, and, and so so I think that it, it has to, a lot to do with uh, politics uh, more than it does uh, with uh, religion, uh, with Muslims as an ummah uh, more than Islam as a religion. Right. And not to mention the, the, the efforts they are making, they are making to impede technological advancement, scientific progress, control of resources, oil and minerals. This is a whole, a whole conversation, geopolitical conversation, I, I would imagine. Uh, Dr. Hatton, we do have, a, and Brother Akhan, we have a report about Sri Lanka. I would like to watch it, and then we can take your thoughts, Dr. Hatton. You guys, we have a, a report regarding the situations of Muslims in Sri Lanka who are facing ongoing violence. So please take a look at this report and stay tuned to the UMA tonight. Monks behaving badly. An angry mob of hundreds of people led by Buddhist monks attacked a warehouse belonging to a Muslim owned clothing chain in Sri Lanka's capital Colombo on Thursday. This comes as Buddhist hardliners ramp up their campaigns against Muslims' lifestyle. The warehouse belongs to Fashion Pug, a popular clothing chain that operates stores throughout the country. The attackers yelled insults against Muslims throughout the attack. The attack injured at least five people, including journalists seeking to cover the event, and appears to reflect the continuing hostility directed against minority Muslims from hardline members of Sri Lanka's Sinhalese Buddhist majority. The Muslim Council of Sri Lanka warned that Thursday's disturbances pushed religious and ethnic tensions in the island to a new high. 
Indeed, one of Sri Lanka's most vocal and prominent Buddhist nationalist group, the Pudu Palasena, or PPS, which means Buddhist force, denied they were involved in the latest altercations. But the PBS has a history of making inflammatory remarks against Muslims, having already forced Islamic clerics to withdraw halal certification on local foods, citing that it offends non-Muslims. Muslims make up about 9% of Sri Lanka's population, making them the third largest group after Sinhalese Buddhists and Tamils. During the long civil war that bedded Buddhists against Tamils, Muslims kept a low profile. Four years after the end of the war, they are now being targeted by increasingly vocal Buddhist hardliners who call for their followers to boycott Muslim-owned businesses and recently pressured the government into getting rid of halal labels on food. In Sri Lanka's multi-ethnic society, Buddhist hardliners are sending a clear message that any practices of an Islamic nature will not be tolerated. Staying tuned to the Uma tonight, uh, Dr. Hatem Badrakman. We saw that uh, that really alarming video uh, of Sri Lanka, and what really surprised me was they said this extremist Buddhist organization wanted Muslims uh, to uh, remove the halal label on food in supermarkets because it offends non-Muslims. I, I think that's almost comical. Why, why would so strange thing, isn't it, Dr. Hatem? Well, intolerance begets intolerance. I guess when you do not tolerate the person, you don't tolerate any of their practices, and it becomes like a vicious cycle. Right. Uh, right. So any symbol of their, you know, identity uh, becomes right. hated. Like in Switzerland, for example, when they w there was a, 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 some legislation that was planned. I don't know if it was passed to ban minarets on mosques. It was. It was passed. Oh, okay. And I believe, you know, uh, someone had mentioned there was maybe five or ten mosques in all of Switzerland. So this is one, another one of those cases where it doesn't. Really, the minaret itself is not in question, rather the identity of the of, of the community. Right. And of course, a lot of this is also, uh, also what you said: uh, xenophobia, right? So a fear of the unknown or fear of the foreigner. So how much of this can be prevented just by simply interfaith dialogue and communities getting to know each other, getting to know neighbors? I think that plays a big role because when you don't know what the other person is from or what they believe or what they are doing, this creates fear. Would you agree, doctor? Absolutely. There is so much that we could work on together. There is, there is so much room for cooperation and the well-being of you know, the humankind. Uh, I think we all agree on protecting the, the Earth, planet Earth. Uh, we all agree on uh, you know, s the security of our neighborhoods, uh, mm -hmm. social justice. Right, uh, there are around. lots of agendas that we could work on together. And I think that interface dialogue, particularly in, nowadays, needs to take a different uh, direction and instead of just c c uh, focusing on divinities yeah. and talking about you know what I believe and what you believe I mean, it, it is not a bad idea to <laughs> sort of to introduce what we believe to one another but this will not take us anywhere in terms of working together yeah. effectively to improve our conditions to improve our you know for, uh, for the welfare of the community uh, we, we need to move on beyond uh, you know, the talk about divinities and what do you believe on Ma about Mary? <laughs> right. uh, we believe that Mary is this and right. we... Uh, so this exchange of niceties, uh, right. yeah. we need to take it a step further. We need a real action plan, is Absolutely. what you're saying. <laughs> Go ahead, Barak. Yes, uh, as I just see in the news now, and uh, I'm the news person, just in this. <laughs> 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 so, uh, you see that uh, Buddhist monks just attack many mosques in, in uh, this area. Uh, for example, uh, Daduru, uh, Uyagama, uh, and also... Uh, You're probably massacring the names, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, there's another one in uh, an area called Mothor. There is another mosque in uh, Obisika, Rabwara. Uh, also, there's another uh, mosque in another uh, four areas. Uh, beside uh, some news, w one from the BBC uh, say Sri Lanka uh, Buddhist attack Muslim owned store which we heard about it and right. uh, also I think it wasn't mentioned in the report that there is five or six uh, journalists were, were attacked 
and one of them he needs uh, some stitches. Uh, in other news, we see that BBC Muslims killed in attack in uh, Burma's province. Also, we see uh, Muslims vanish in Buddhist attacks approach in Myanmar. We see that in Sri Lanka, police stands by a Buddhist monks attack uh, Muslims. There is hostility now from uh, the Buddhist monks against Muslims in many areas. It's not only in Sri Lanka now, and I think it's not, it, it just started in the areas has minorities or Muslim minorities. Uh, and as we see, their governments and their police are standi standing by, by them. And also we see there is a lot of media stations and uh, media organization, they just keep silence in some issues like that. And if, if we just compare that to any uh, small uh, moves against any groups in any Muslim countries, we, say, we see that there is a power and big propaganda against this. What is the reason behind uh, this silence and what is the reason of having this big hostility from those Buddhist against uh, Muslims or these minorities and also I need just to, to, to know uh, why is this silence from our Arab countries and our Muslim countries against this w what we need to do because most, most of the people, when we just uh, talked about Burma and uh, started to uh, show this issue to them, they just asked, what should we do? Just we turned about, we had, you know, like, subhanAllah, as we see in, in the news, uh, also there is... Uh, Hardline Buddhist targeting Sri Lankan Yeah, they Shri are Lankan just Muslims. targeting some Sri Lankan Muslims. Uh, behind, behind this, we need to ask, Yes, we see that there is hostility against Muslims. There is such and such. But what should we do as Muslims? Uh, and perhaps if, if I can throw one quick thing in there, Dr. Hatem, uh, many Muslims are not able to do anything realistically around the world. So how should a practicing Muslim feel in his heart when he sees another human being, another Muslim person, halfway around the world? He doesn't know him, he'll never see him, but he sees the video we just showed about, mm -hmm. and he sees the, heart, the hurt he has. How should we feel as Muslims when we, when we see that? Well, we should certainly feel a lot of pain, but uh, the idea here is uh, Allah does not burden souls beyond their capacity. Uh, what is within our capacity? Uh, I think there is much that is within our capacity. But before I talk about what we need to do as Muslims, the, the, what is happening in, in Sri Lanka, what happened in uh, Myanmar and continues to happen, what happened in Bosnia, all of those places, if you're talking about the chicken and the egg, and people always talk about the cause and effect, and what's happening to Muslims is because Muslims did that, and you know, b before, and that is why this is happening to Muslims. So they always try to say that we, we've originated uh, the, the tension. Yeah, right. uh, but, but look yeah. at uh, Myanmar. <laughs> Muslims didn't originate any tension. <laughs> right. uh, look at Sri Lanka. Look at uh, Bosnia, for instance, the example of Bosnia. Uh, when did Muslim, Muslims uh, generate that tension or cause it? Uh, so it's quite obvious that, uh, the, that there is um, and that there is an injustice that is being done against us and uh, that we are being wrong done by those forces. Uh, and now, as a Muslim, uh, there, there are individuals, there are organizations, and there are states. Uh, the states uh, have a little bit more to do than the individuals and organizations. I think the states should pressure the state of uh, Sri, Sri Lanka, Lanka and Burma, and, and, and Burma uh, to uh, sort of refrain from this injustice. Uh, and the states, uh, they have their own tools. They have their own uh, you know, uh, capacities to, to, to work within uh, different organizations, different international organizations, and so on, to pressure them. Um, directly or indirectly through allies in the West or the East or wherever. Uh, the, the, there is the, the obligation of organizations, particularly bigger and more capable of organizations, particularly organizations that have some uh, relief efforts, there is an obligation here to uh, hasten to those areas wherever there is a need and to provide them with the support that is needed um, uh, you know, the fact that some people are uh, being killed 
and you may not be able to help them does not negate the fact that there are people who are hungry or people who are homeless without shelter. We've seen all of those, uh, you know, uh, tragic events and, uh, and the suffering that happened to the people in Myanmar. So organizations need to do this. And individuals, uh, there, I think for individuals there is like short term and long term. Short term, do your best to reach out to some organization that uh, would take your financial support to those places and, um, and make dua uh, and inform the people around you, raise the awareness of the people around you, particularly if you live in a country uh, th that does have some influence. Dr. Hatham, of course, uh, in, in particular uh, Western countries where you can write your local senator, I, I, I say that's a good idea in these cases. Absolutely. Do what you can. We, have, we actually have a phone call uh, via Skype from Brother Akram from Sri Lanka. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Akram, how are you? Thank you for calling. Hi. Yeah. So, uh, Assalamu alaikum, brother. Can you hear me? Go right ahead. Yeah. Uh, I'm from Sri Lanka, okay? Uh, uh, I'm uh, watching your program. It's, uh, it's uh, very appreciating. Um, uh, I want to let you know this uh, just uh, problem with both community. Can you hear me? Yes, Barakafiq, brother, go ahead. Please tell us, inform us what is happening amongst the Muslims there in Sri Lanka. Go ahead. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm tell you, I mean, uh, this is, uh, the Muslim community is a third minority. The Buddhist is a first majority in Sri Lanka. And uh, almost 80% is the Buddhist. And uh, almost 10% is a Muslim community. Uh, the, the Muslim community most of the time they are using as a, their language as a Tamil. I mean Tamil is a language for them. The uh, same is they are using a Sinhala as a language. The most of the Muslims, they doesn't know Sinhala proper well. Hello? Yeah, go ahead brother, I can hear you. Continue please. Yeah. Uh, and uh, sing, the, most of the Sinhala peoples, they doesn't know this, uh, the Tamil language, okay? The 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 the, the need of, of the of the current the situation. I mean, uh, uh, what do you call? Uh, we need the proper bridge for the both community. They doesn't know uh, what is the halal, what is the haram, yes, yeah, so and they course. doesn't know what is the niqab. <coughs> they doesn't know what is the what is the abai. I mean, uh, what is the of what course, so educate, Brother Ackerman, so you, what you're saying, education amongst the Sri, Sri Lankan Muslims is also key. Yes. Brother, we're going to take a short break. Please stay with us on the line, and we will be back with you shortly, inshallah. And you guys at home, please continue watching the Ummah tonight to learn more about the continuing violence uh, being waged against Sri Lanka's Muslims. Stay tuned. should never underestimate the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the tsunami that happened in Japan that killed so many people. It is time for a change. It is time for us to come forth and to make that change, my brothers and sisters. We must enjoin the, the right and forbid the evil in every land, in every Muslim land. We have to go back to the original source. And the original source is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are actually here in downtown Cairo, Egypt, in front of the 44th Cairo International Book Fair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In a game of golf, both the caddy and the golfer have the same goal, to get the ball into the hole. Interest-free banking is similar. With a clear view of the fairway, a predefined agreement without shifting targets, things should end up where you want them. Your deposits are safe, 
and your funds are ethically managed with a transparent and equitable approach to sharing risk and reward. No interest burden means more time to relax without the worry of nasty surprises. Rest assured, our interest is mutual. Jazz Bank, Nigeria's first full-fledged non-interest bank. Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to the Ummah tonight, where we are addressing the issue of uh, Muslims in Sri Lanka, where they are suffering from violence, ongoing violence being waged against them by the Buddhist majority in particular, and specifically rather the Badhu Balasina BBS group. Uh, Dr. Hatem, um, if I'm not mistaken, the Prophet peace be upon him did say the dua is the weapon of the believer. So we are over a, mus a billion Muslims worldwide, maybe a billion and a half even. So how important is it for all the Muslims, the Muslims in America, the Muslims in in Europe, the Muslims everywhere, to simply, you know, uh, s supplicate for these people? Well, that's certainly extremely important. As I mentioned, that, that the individual that, that, that cannot do anything uh, in terms of logistical support, in terms of uh, financial support, uh, at least uh, the, we are all capable of making dua. Uh, the, the, you know, uh, even if you're handicapped, even if you're deaf and mute, you, even if you do not have those uh, uh, faculties, you, the, the dua can be made by each and every one of us. You know, uh, uh, you just need to seek Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for help, uh, pursue His help for those brothers and sisters that are under attack. So I think that this is an obligation that uh, is uh, binding on all of us, and no one has an excuse to not make dua. Uh, and exactly. and uh, certainly, uh, the, the idea here is, is not just to say, well, may Allah help them. Okay. Uh, why, why don't you do a little bit more? Why don't you pray to rakahs and, and, and make dua, like sincere dua? Why don't you wake up in the night and make sincere uh, dua? This will be good for you as well. Uh, because Allah wants to see that you care about your brethren. Allah wants to see that you do actually care about this ummah that you have taken his, his, uh, his command to heart in هذه أمتكم أمة واحدة this nation of yours is one nation and I'm your Lord, so worship me alone so Allah wants to see this from you so you need to uh, show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he expects of you and what he wants and requires of you Be before, before we move to the next point I needed to mention that in, in the long term I think these um, these are like uh, alerts, uh, alarms for us that our Ummah has become so weak that we are, we, we are talking about incapacity, we're talking about our inability to do anything and, and so on and our, we see our brothers and sisters suffering in different parts of the world and we are unable to reach out to them and, and support them and, and uh, protect them from, from this uh, injustice. So. Uh, Shouldn't all of this be sufficient for the individual Muslim to start waking up and to start committing to his deen, start working for you know, the, the betterment of this ummah, the unity of this ummah? I think it, it is, it's long overdue. And I think that all of us that hear about what is happening and uh, not get motivated to work mm -hmm. for the betterment of our ummah, we do have a major problem well said. With, with our uh, belonging. Thank you, Dr. Hatton. Well said, uh, uh, as usual, excellent points. Uh, Brother Ahmed, before I go back to you, brother, I want to go back to the Skype call with Brother Akram from Sri Lanka. Brother, are you still there? Yeah. Brother, can you speak a little bit about the, vi the violence, that the, the news that we are reporting, the violence that took place in Colombo, Sri Lanka, where a fas the fashion bug was burnt to the ground? Uh, can you speak a little bit about the violence in Colombo and throughout the country in general? Yeah, it's uh, the fashion bug is a Muslim owned uh, the uh, garment chain in, in uh, Sri Lanka. It's a, the uh, garment chain in Sri Lanka it's, uh, by a Muslim uh, company. Uh, it was uh, attacked by on uh, last week by some of the Buddhist monks, and uh, uh, it was taken to the uh, illegal. Uh, what are the police doing, brother? What are the police doing? Are they are they helping the? Are they on, on uh, 
yes, yes, yes. What is was uh, is we uh, did they did not uh, uh, involved in in issue as a I'm in uh, as police. I hope you can understand. Uh, yeah, there are some uh, clips that in released. Uh, I mean, one Buddhist monk is uh, attacking for the discussion box uh, uh, CCTV camera. Yeah, subhanallah. It's visible the whole world. Brother, can and you tell me? Yeah, it's front of the police officers. Subhanallah. So the police yeah. are, are, aren't helping at all. They are complacent in the whole uh, situation. Brother uh, Akram, what about this group, the Bothu yes. Balasina group, that supposedly is a, a Buddhist extremist organization called the BBS, behind, I guess, some of this violence? Have you heard of them? The Bothu Balasina group? Yeah, it's Yeah, go ahead, brother. Who are they? Tell us about them, brother. Uh, SubhanAllah, I think the Skype line is, is not strong. Um, I don't think the brother can hear me. We can't really hear him. Perhaps he, he can give us a call back on uh, on that live uh, call live uh, from uh, from from Sri Lanka. Uh, brother Brother Ahmed, can you give me and Dr. Hatam a little bit of a background uh, regarding the, the situation here? Is this something new, or is this ethnic or religious violence been happening over and over again in Sri Lanka? No, just if if we go in uh, history, we'll find that Sri Lanka has spent uh, many years. Uh, in this racism fight and then in uh, um, 2004 they stopped this and then they stayed calm for a while and then we came to another move uh, another racism moves against Muslims in this area if we concentrated on the percentage of Muslims there you will find it's about nine to ten percent the same percentage of Christians but there is no attacks against any res uh, like religious groups but Muslims. We have to put question marks in uh, this uh, point. Uh, I, I, I just would like to go back to the word wake up Muslims, doctor. Uh, nowadays, or uh, if you ask anyone, do you make supplications? If, do you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They will say yes. If you ask them, what do you ask, you will find it's all individual uh, supplications and dua. There is no feeling of the, the, the being part of this uh, ummah. There is no feeling of being part of uh, the Muslim nation. We have to just feel uh, how important it is to be part of uh, this uh, just a big organization what's called Islam and Muslims. How can we do that? How just can we convince our brothers and sisters that you need to make supplication with the same way you'll make it for yourself? Uh, I know there's a lot of people, they have uh, problems with marriage, they have problems with kids, they have problems with uh, even, uh, you know, Ill or, uh, illness or many things. They just make sincere dua and sincere supplications to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to erase all of this and to remove all of these uh, sickness from them. But when it comes to my ummah, there is no feeling about it. Yes, D do you agree with this or just uh, I, I have like a negative uh, opinion about uh, what is happening? It, it, it is not just about the belonging to the ummah because the belonging to the ummah or the weakness in this belonging is a manifestation of a more dangerous disease which is the disease of uh, lack of spirituality. We are spiritually challenged. Uh, you know, most of us are spiritually challenged. Most of us are consumed into materialism. Most of us have fallen into the trap of materialism. It's a materialistic world. Uh, uh, that's why you find that when you make supplication, uh, if you if you want to get sort of uh, accepted into a, a prestigious university, you will be so sincere in your supplication and you'll be so persistent and you repeat it and over and over and you wake up at night and then this and that to just get admitted into a, like a good university or to get, you know, to, to marry a certain, uh, you know, uh, girl or, or man. Uh, but when it comes to like seeking forgiveness, for instance, when you seek forgiveness, are you that, is your heart that present? when you supplicate for forgiveness, just for yourself. 
I'm not talking about asking for forgiveness for anyone else. Asking for forgiveness for yourself. Uh, your heart is not that present, like when you're asking for something material. Uh, so I, I think that it goes back to the fact that we are spiritually challenged, and there is lack of spirituality, lack of uh, there is there, we're being sort of uh, immersed into the material world uh, so much, and the, the, we are not taking care of our hearts. Have we taken care of our hearts? They would have been a lot more tender. They would have been a lot more responsive to those atrocities that afflict Muslims in various places. Uh, and we've seen a lot more than this in in uh, Burma or Myanmar, and uh, but we tend to forget. You know, we there are a lot of atrocities that you know that we've become sort of insensitive. Right, we become the, desensitized. Yeah. Perhaps some of our du'a aren't accepted as well, as you said, because we become so far away from the deen and, and so uh, so into the dunya. Perhaps uh, that is the case as well. Dr. Hatem, I have many friends from Bosnia, and you obviously know this w more than me. They, they, they told me many stories about Bosnia, about the genocide in Bosnia. And they said, you know what, if there was one good thing that came from this terrible catastrophe, was the world abandoned us and they saw all these terrible things happen to our women and children and our small boys and the men as well, everyone. Um, we became more religious as a result and we became more committed to Islam. And we realized who we are as Muslims. Uh, that was what my Bosnian friends told me. So do you think perhaps that this could also be the case in Burma and Sri Lanka, that people might come out of this saying, look, before I was a Muslim by name, but now I'm Muslim and I, and I understand why. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's what you make out of uh, <coughs> the events, what you make out of Al-Qadr. Uh, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed that this uh, happened and it happened. Now. Uh, our role, whether we are inside of Sri Lanka, outside of Sri Lanka, particularly Muslims that are inside, inside of Sri Lanka, our role now is to make the best out of this, is to let this be a reminder for us, to bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it was a gift. Although it, it came in the form of suffering, in the form of pain, but it, w it, w it would have been a gift if it leads us closer, brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you see how sometimes, you know, good happenings, good things happening to you could distract you from, you know, the deen and uh, from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and, vice, and vice versa. So what, what matters at the end is what you make out of it, where it leads you. If you start to become more organized as a community, you know, Sri Lankan Muslim community, if they started to become more organized, they started to become more united, they started to think of their future uh, or then the future of Islam in Sri Lanka and to plan for it uh, short term and long term, then I think uh, those, th those uh, if, 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 the, if this happened, uh, then those actions would have been the blessing in this right. uh, suffering. Right, to take matters into their own hands Absolutely. and to build something in the future. And Absolutely. how important is a doctor owning responsibility? Because I know in the Middle East especially, I constantly hear people say, you know, where is the USA to help us? Where is the, the NATO to help us? Where is the UN, UN to help us? Oh, they're against us. Okay, look, most of that is well known. Many people are against us. Some people are for us. Some people are against us. But that is not the point. The point here is that we have to, like you said, come together as a community and ask our own leaders what they are doing and, uh, and call on our own community and organize ourselves to move forward and to pave the way. I believe that's more important than complaining about who's not helping us, but rather to, help our, to begin to help ourselves. Would you agree? I, I do agree to, to a great extent that you have to help yourself before you reach out to people for help. Uh, but I don't think that you do not need reach out uh, you know, uh, to people for help because uh, I think that uh, there are forces that within those uh, countries, within those communities, there are forces that are against us, and there are forces that are neutral, and there are right. forces that are also uh, warm to us or with us or uh, support us. Uh, and we do see this, you know, if, if people who live in the West or people who have lived for quite some time in the West, they have seen that there are various forces within the community. So I think that you reach out to people for help, you reach out to the uh, fair-minded, you reach out to people of conscience, uh, uh, regardless of their religious affiliation, regardless of their national affiliation, there are people within every nation that have conscience. So you reach out to those people for help, mm -hmm. but certainly you need to you sort of uh, uh, 
uh, seek the resources within, seek the power with, uh, within, and, uh, and use it to your best uh, capacity, to the, b the best capacity possible, and uh, while you're se seeking help for, from others. I think we're not tapping into the resources within our own enough. Uh, we've, got, we've got a lot of resources. Uh, we can invest in, in, in them, we can magnify them, uh, and, and uh, certainly we, we're, we're not powerless. We could do a lot. We are an owner of 1.4 million yes. people. And it's, so yeah. so we're, we're not really that uh, powerless, uh, uh, but we, we do need to discover our strengths and, and, and uh, and uh, invest in them. Yeah, you couldn't have said, s s s s said it in a better way because, of course, we control this um, a vast, uh, a vast amount of wealth and resources all across the globe. And people, you know, I always hear people say, "This uh, such and such country is a leader in the Muslim world. This country is a leader in the Muslim world." Okay, where are they leading us? I'm waiting for their leadership. Inshallah, I hope it comes soon. Inshallah, <laughs> we, we hope that comes from our sheikhs and uh, scholars like Dr. Hatim and uh, uh, most of our sheikhs, inshallah, all around the world. Uh, Inshallah, if we just go for seconds in uh, our Facebook page uh, on Huda TV and the Ummah tonight, we will find that our post uh, about Sri Lanka, support Muslims in Sri Lanka, uh, and speaking about this episode, we found that many people, they just started to make dua. Oh, and, and, and subhanAllah, this is good, uh, yani, inshallah, indication mm -hmm. that there is still some live hearts in this. We see that Sister Ida uh, from Indonesia, she say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help, mm -hmm. bless, and protect all Muslims there and also on other parts of the world. We see also uh, there's some people, they're still asking about the program. It's 730 uh, GMT. Uh, also, Brother Muhammad Nadir, uh, may Allah bless and protect all Muslims. Uh, we hope, inshallah, all Muslims just keep these du'as in, 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 in their hearts. Uh, we see Sister Shukriya say, May Allah protect all Muslims in Sri Lanka and Burma. We didn't speak about Burma, but there is that, that yeah, is a good indicator that they still have, inshallah, these areas in their hearts. We see uh, Brother Alwi, may Allah guide them to the right path and uh, unification. Uh, Unification and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them all, Sister Sayyida. And Haluda Idris uh, says, uh, May Allah with, uh, be with uh, His infinite mercy, protect them all. Uh, Ameen. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you, brothers and sisters. And we need to see all the time on our Facebook and uh, with your call that you are still having. Uh, live hearts and interest of uh, and you have your interest in the Muslim Ummah. This program is done to show you what is happening in the Muslim Ummah and we need to clarify that all the time. We need to concentrate on our issues. We need to discuss this. We bring, mashallah, honor sheikhs like uh, Dr. Hatim to talk and talk about this issue and let us know what is going on and give us the right way with an Islamic perspective. We need to just wake up, as Dr. Hatem said now, and uh, draw our hearts close to the right path of uh, our Ummah and Islam all the time, inshallah. That's I think, but Dr. We're, we're out of time, but if perhaps in just 20, 30 seconds of Dr. Hatem can give us a brief word of encouragement to the Muslims of Sri Lanka. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them support and I ask Allah to give them victory and I ask Allah to deter their enemies from uh, any form of injustice against them and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to draw the hearts of the Muslims closer to their uh, cause and to uh, unite the Muslims in Sri Lanka and I do ask of them to turn their faces and their hearts towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in humility and humbleness mm -hmm. and supplicate for you know uh, the betterment of their community and uh, for the ending of their suffering uh, but, but I tell them that it is your responsibility uh, to, to get united mm -hmm. and to start working and planning for your future in Sri Lanka and the future of your kids and the future of Islam and your uh, beautiful island.
Dr. Hatem, it's really truly an honor to have you here, and I look forward to having you again in the future. Exactly. Okay. Same year. Thank you so much, and uh, Brother Ahmed, I look forward to seeing you next Monday, inshallah. And you guys at home, please don't forget to follow us on Google Plus. You can be an I correspondent for Huda TV for the Ummah tonight simply by following this program on Google Plus and send us your videos, your reports, your thoughts, and your feedback. Uh, until next time, I leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.